Greetings and welcome to my channel. On today's menu we have very interesting and mysterious story about incident on flight 1628 that took place back in the 1986. Japan Airline Flight 1628 was a claimed UFO incident that occurred on November 17, 1986 involving Japanese Boeing 747 cargo aircraft. I'm sure you can already guess, the incident was widely publicized and of course covered up by officials, but it's still very interesting to this day. Before we start, please consider subscribing to my channel. It would also be awesome if you like and share the video and leave your comments on this case. If you have your own YouTube channel and you are looking for some copyright free background videos, visit my other channel Monarch Free Videos and help yourself. Just subscribe and like, no need to ask for any permission. With that out of the way, let's find out what was going on with the flight 1628. Flight 1628 was en route from Paris to Narita International Airport near Tokyo with a cargo of wine. On the Reykjavik to Anchorage section of the flight at 1711 over eastern Alaska, the crew first witnessed two unidentified objects to their left. Those abruptly rose from below and closed in to escort the aircraft. Each had two rectangular arrays of what appeared to be glowing nozzles or thrusters though their bodies remained obscured by darkness. When closest, the aircraft cabin was lit up and the captain could feel the heat on his face. These two craft departed before a third, much larger, disc-shaped object started trailing them. Anchorage Air Traffic Control requested an oncoming United Airlines flight to confirm the unidentified traffic but when a military craft sighted flight 1628 at about 1751, no other craft could be distinguished. The sighting lasted 15 minutes and ended in the vicinity of Denali. On November 17, 1986, the Japanese crew of Boeing 747 cargo fighter witnessed three unidentified objects after sunset while flying over eastern Alaska. The objects seemed to prefer the cover of darkness to their left and to avoid the brighter sky on their right. At least the first two of the objects were observed by all three crew members. Captain Terauchi, an ex-fighter pilot with more than 10,000 hours flight experience, co-pilot Tamafuji and the flight engineer Yoshio Tokuba. The routine cargo flight entered Alaska on autopilot, cruising at 565 miles per hour, an altitude of 35,000 feet. At 1709, the Anchorage ATC advised a new heading towards Talkitina, Alaska. As soon as flight 1628 straightened out of its turn at 1711, Captain Terauchi noticed two craft to his far left, at some 2,000 feet below his altitude which he assumed to be military aircraft. These were pacing his flight path and speed. At 1718 the two objects abruptly veered to position about 500 feet or 1000 feet in front of the aircraft, assuming a stacked configuration. It is 3000 and above. Uh, 5 golf mic, uh, actually amend altitude, descend to maintain 1 1000. Uh, Army 72010, descend to maintain 2000, I got you loud and clear. In doing so, they activated a kind of reverse thrust and the lights became dazzlingly bright. To match the speed of the aircraft from the sideways approach, the object displayed what Terauchi described as a disregard for inertia. The thing was flying as if there was no such thing as gravity. It speed up, then stopped, then flew at our speed in our direction so that to us it appeared to be standing still. The next instant it changed course. In other words, the flying object had overcome gravity. The reverse thrust caused a bright flare for 3 to 7 seconds, to the extent that Captain Terauchi could feel the warmth of their glows. Air traffic control was notified at this point at 1719, 
who could not confirm any traffic in the indicated position. After 3 to 5 minutes, the objects assumed a side-to-side -side configuration, which they maintained for another 10 minutes. They accompanied the aircraft with an altituding motion and some back and forth rotation of the jet nozzles, which seemed to be under automatic control, causing them to flare with brighter and duller luminosity. Each object had a square shape, consisting of two rectangular arrays of what appeared to be glowing nozzles or thrusters, separated by a dark central section. Captain Terauchi speculated in his drawings that the object would appear cylindrical if viewed from another angle, and that the observed movement of the nozzles could be ascribed to the cylinder's rotation. The objects left abruptly at 1723, moving to a point below the horizon to the east. Where the first objects disappeared, Captain Terauchi now noticed a pale band of light that mirrored their altitude, speed and direction. Setting their onboard radar scope to a 25 nautical miles range, he confirmed an object in the expected 10 o'clock direction at about 7.5 nautical miles distance, and informed ATC of its presence. Anchorage found nothing on their radar, but Elmendor Norad Regional Operation Control Center, directly in his flight path, reported a surge primary return after some minutes. As the city lights of Fairbanks began to illuminate the object, Captain Terauchi believed to perceive the outline of a gigantic spaceship on his port side that was twice the side of an aircraft carrier. It was, however, outside First Officer Temafuji's field of view. The object followed information, or in the same relative position throughout the 45 degrees turn, a descent from 35,000 to 31,000 feet and a 360 degree turn. The short range radar or Fairbanks Airport failed, however, to register the object. Anchorage ATC offered military intervention, which was declined by the pilot due to his knowledge of a Mantel incident. The object was not noted by any of two planes which approached Flight 1628 to confirm its presence by which time Flight 1628 had also lost sign of it. Flight 1628 arrived safely in Anchorage at 18.20. It is 3,000 and above. Uh, 5 Golf Mike, uh, actually amend altitude, descend and maintain 1, 1,000. Uh, Army 72010, descend and maintain 2,000, I got you loud and clear. Captain Terauchi cited in the official Federal Aviation Administration report that the object was a UFO. In December 1986, Terauchi gave an interview to two Kyodo news journalists. Japan Airlines soon grounded him from talking to the press and moved him to the desk job. He was reinstated as a pilot several years later and retired eventually in the North Kanto, Japan. Kyodo News contacted Paul Stag, the FAA Public Information Officer in Anchorage, on December 24 and received confirmation of the incident, followed by UPA on the 29th. The FAA Alaskan region consulted John Callahan, the FAA Division Chief of the Accidents and Investigation Branch, as they wanted to know what to tell the media about the UFO. John Callahan was unaware of any such incident, considering it likely early flight of a stealth bomber then in development. He asked the Alaskan region to forward the relevant data to their technical center in Atlantic City, New Jersey, where he and his superior played back the radar data and tied it in with the voice tapes by videotaping the concurrent playbacks. A day later, at FAA headquarters, they briefed Vice Admiral Donald D. Engen, who watched the whole video of over half an hour, and asked them not to talk to anybody until they were given the OK, and to prepare an encompassing presentation of the data for a group of government officials the next day. The meeting was attended by representatives of the FBI, CIA and President Reagan's scientific study team, among others. Upon completion of the presentation, all present were told that the incident was a secret and that their meeting never took place.
According to Callahan, the officials considered the data to represent the first instance of recorded radar data on a UFO, and they took possessions of all the presented data. John Callahan, however, managed to retain the original video, the pilot's report and the FAA's first report in his office. The forgotten target printouts of the computer data were also rediscovered, from which all targets can be reproduced that were in the sky at the time. After a three-month investigation, the FAA formally released the results at a press conference held on March 5, 1987. Here Paul Stock retraced earlier FAA suggestions that their controllers confirm UFO and ascribe it to a split radar image, which appeared with unfortunate timing. He clarified that FAA did not have enough material to confirm that something was there. And though they were accepting the description by the crew, they were unable to support what they saw. The McGrath incident was revealed here amongst the ample set of documents supplied to the journalists. The sighting received special attention from the media, as a supposed instance of the tracking of UFOs on both ground, the airborne radar, while being observed by experienced airline pilots, with subsequent confirmation by FAA division chief. It is 3,000 and above. Five golf mic, uh, actually amend altitude, descend to maintain 1-1000. One, one uh, Army 72010, descend to maintain 2000, I got you loud and clear. UFO researcher Philip J. Klass investigated the incident and wrote in his book The UFO Invasion that the FAA information reveals Terauchi to be a UFO repeater, with two other UFO sightings prior to November 17, and two more this past January, which normally raises a caution flag for experienced UFO investigator. The Japan Airlines pilot is convinced that UFOs are extraterrestrial, and when describing the lights, Terauchi often used the term spaceship or mothership. According to the UFO skeptic Robert Sheffer, the bottom line is, Terauchi's own flight crew saw only lights, and other aircraft checking out the situation saw nothing unusual. On 29 January 1987, at 18.40, Alaska Airlines Flight 53 observed a fast-moving object on their onboard weather radar. While at 35,000 feet, some 60 miles west of McGrath, on a flight from Nome to Anchorage, the radar registered a strong target in their 12 o'clock position at 25 miles range. While they could not distinguish any object or light visually, they noticed that the radar object was increasing its distance at very high rate. With every sweep of the radar, about one second apart, the object added 5 miles to its distance, translating to a speed of 18,000 miles per hour. The pilot, however, relayed a speed of a mile a second to the control tower, or a speed of 3,600 miles per hour, but confirmed that the target exceeded both 50 miles and 100 miles ranges of the radar scope in a matter of seconds. The object was outside the radar range of the Anchorage IRTCC and additional radar data covering the specified time and location failed to substantiate the pilot's claim. It is 3,000 and above. Five golf mic, uh, actually amend altitude, descend to maintain 1-1000. One, one uh, Army 72010, descend to maintain 2000, I got you loud and clear. What do you guys think about this case? Overexcited pilot into UFOs seeing things, or there was something more to it? When it comes to UFOs, there are always two sides of the story. Believer versus skeptic. However you look at it, both sides having hard time to prove or debunk sightings of the unearthly visitors. Before you leave, please subscribe if you didn't already and like the video. Thank you for stopping by, stay safe and I'll see you soon.